Okay, so we have uh, got our enemy AI patrolling, and as you see in the tutorial, just like that, um, it runs off the site. So what we're going to do, uh, we, we want to fix that, is we're going to set up a, a reach edge transition. And much like, um, you, if you remember back when we did our player, how it send, uh, sent a circle cast or a ray cast down towards the ground, basically you're going to use that same principle, but you're going to offset it for this enemy. So what it's going to do is it's going to think, uh, that, or it's going to know once it reaches the edge. So if you get to the edge and that little ray cast comes down off that offset and it's not meeting something, it's going to stop moving that direction. And then it's going to turn around and go back the other direction. Now we're going to run into an issue whenever we start getting the uh, chase uh, worked out. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to set that up. And because we have that already set up as a, um, as a kind of a macro for um, ground detection, we are going to use that. So uh, let's go into our uh, next part of this and we're going to add some parameters to the ground check that we already set up. So what we're gonna do, since we already have a ground check macro, we're going to uh, modify it. We're gonna look, open that up so it's under your mac, go to macros, ground check, just click on it. And uh, you should see uh, this big giant mess, right? So um, what we're going to uh, change in this is we're going to add a new input unit with three value input parameters. So uh, when something comes into the output, uh, I believe is how that's going to work, right? So, oh, nope, we need an input. We're going to put, sorry, we're going to put an input. So come over here to the left side, put input uh, nesting in nesting. And then on that, what we're going to do is we're going to give it some value input. So we've got that selected. Go to value inputs. On the first one, we're going to call this offset. And uh, it is going to be a vector 2 because uh, it's going to come off of the enemy. And you're going to ask it, well, how far off the enemy are you going to come off? We're going to explain that. Uh, so. Um, we also need a radius because if you remember it's a circle cast not a ray cast um, it is going to have a default value I'm oh, sorry it's saying hide label sorry this that's not oh, I'm sorry we don't need a hide label we need a default value I'm sorry I was looking at the wrong checkbox alright so it's gonna be a float and it is gonna be a default value and we're gonna set that to 0.3 uh, so this one is not set yet, but we are going to go ahead and set that one. And then we need one more. Uh, we need a distance. So for how far are we going to throw this thing? So it, this might sound familiar when you looked at that uh, ground check for the player to make sure that he didn't jump multiple times. It is a float, and we're going to make it 1.1. So just straight down, right? So come down and 1.1 units down. Um, then we're going to determine whether you're going to work or not. So then we are going to connect the new inputs to the circle cast node that we already had. So uh, let me see, see if we can fix this a little bit. Goodness, is that is that moving the whole thing? It's almost moving the whole thing. That's very frustrating. I don't know why some of these things move others. If you can help me out there, that would be awesome. Ah, uh, you dummy. <laughs> Sometimes I hate this. All right, let's see if we can fix this. All right, so what we need is a add up the vector three. So add, and again, it's not a, a generic or a, a scalar. What we need is add vector three. I made the mistake the first time I did this and it messed that up and it wasn't working right and I had to figure that out. So hopefully you didn't make that mistake or because I said that you didn't make that mistake. Um, all right, so radius is going to come into the radius because that remember that's the output or so the input. Um, it's sucking those in, that information in, and then it's going to come to distance and it erases those distances. And if you look, the direction is still down. It's always going to be down, but the offset is what's going to be different. So it's saying get the position on yourself. So enemy, get the position on yourself and uh, figure out the offset. Now again, this is uh, doesn't matter on the player 
because whether the offset is, you know, like one unit over or not, it's not a big deal. We just need to check for the ground. So uh, that is what this is doing. Now, um, we need uh, a, a, a macro for when the enemy reaches the edge. So we've got our ground check set up to where we can use this on our enemy. And it's got an input, and we can put that information in. Let's make a new flow macro on our macro thing here, macro folder. So let's make a new flow macro and call it enemy breach edge. Right. All right. So, okay. So inside this, we're going to set up a late update. And uh, from what I understand, the difference between update something that that um, checks an update every frame and a late update is a late update lets the other updates go first so sometimes you want things to update in a certain order that's how you do that a late update so um, we are going to do a ground check so let's drag that ground check in here notice all of this is already set up for us but it's actually not what we want it to be we'll change that in just a second uh, let's run this into a branch so we'll have a true or false statement so we're gonna branch this so come into the branch and if it is true we don't want you to do anything but if it is false well then we're going to trigger a transition in other words if when you shoot that raycast down when you sit shoot this down and it's not hitting anything uh, then you know uh, we need you to trigger a transition, but when it is hitting something we don't need you to do anything There's nothing that needs to change. So those other things need to update first This is going to update after that now the one thing that needs to change in this according to the tutorial is that it needs to be a radius of 0 0.1 that um, The radius of that little ray cast is not it's not that big a deal. It doesn't have to be that thick. So um Let's see. It says then we'll need to calculate the offset parameters so that it points points the direction the enemy is always facing. So uh, essentially, how we're going to do that is the enemy reach edge graph. We're going to create this section to the left of our uh, current information. So let's go over here. Let's say um, we're going to get local scale. Uh, so figure out what your scale is. This is kind of a, a trick to figure out which direction it's, it's facing. So we're just going to do this on the X. So if it was pointed to the left, that X is going to be negative. So it's saying, hey, get the number for your, uh, your local scale. Because we changed your scale according to whatever direction you were going. And we're going to get X on a vector 2. Because this is a 2D. And uh, we're going to multiply that. So multiply that. And I oh, it's not a scalar. My bad. It is a multiply generic. So it's just a generic multiply. A times B. So we're going to multiply X times uh, the float of 0.5. So basically what that's saying is is that um, we need uh, to calculate the offset by about half the width of your body. So that that's so the enemy is going to send out a little beam offset about half the distance of its little body down. And it's going to stop at the right location. So we're going to multiply that, A times B, so A times B, and then we're going to get where that um, where that beam is supposed to be shooting out. So let's create a vector two x y y is uh, zero x is that, and then we are going to shoot that into the offset. You want to know what the offset's going to be? It's going to be the negative direction of the x whichever or negative or positive you're going to multiply that times 0.5 and about half a distance of your body that's where that needs to go so let's uh, move this up a little bit and clean up our graph a little bit so we're going to uh, select this as a group create forward 
offset um, for Raycast. And we'll make that uh, a yellow because we want to know information for that. So what's the information? It's not necessarily doing anything. And this is where uh, something is going to happen. Um, we're going to uh, make that green. And so the late event, this is what's going to happen after that. Now, uh, the next thing we need to do, and I know this might get, be getting tiring, but hopefully you're sticking with me here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is for our enemy, so let's save that. For our enemy, uh, in patrol mode, we need to add that um, transition macro that we just set up just for the left and right because if it's standing still, it's never going to go off the end. So it, it only has to be left and right. So we're gonna create a transition from left and, uh, to right and back from right back to left. And then for these, we're going to make a macro and we are going to select that enemy reach edge macro on both of those so that whenever it gets to the end, um, enemy reach edge it won't walk off the side. So let's try this out and see if it works it shouldn't walk off the edge now but if you look notice our player is kind of flipping out so it should always stop it's kind of there we go let's well, stop moving for a minute but notice I can't jump oh it just walked off the edge what happened Okay, so um, just real quickly, two things on, uh, if you remember, the, the, the guy is walking off the edge, and I think it's because the radius is not set correctly, so we'll hopefully fix that in just a second. He's not supposed to walk off the edge, and maybe he, yep, he just did, and he hurt me. You jerk. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, the one thing that needs to be fixed on this, if you remember, this needs to be a .3 radius and it needs to go 1.1 and uh, when you fix that uh, hopefully that will update to where he will correctly uh, touch the ground I think you actually have to change that in two places on your player controller so when you go on your player controller uh, where's that other one at I think it was right so you'll notice I can jump now but the animation doesn't change so let's fix the animation uh, we have a radius of 0.3 and a distance of 1.1 and you'll notice that it changed now uh, on that so when you use that when we updated that ground check uh, the first time I did this tutorial I don't remember it doing that but I did it the second time it did it and now I'm doing it again and it did it again so I just uh, that's kind of some trial and error I try to figure out what that was that's that's where you need to fix that okay took me a minute but I figured out what is going on What's going on is um, I forgot to connect this uh, little doodad from right here from add A plus B and that's where you get the origin of the circle cast. So it didn't know where or which direction to send it. So now that I got those things connected, the little dude should not fall off the side. Let's see. He should stop moving that direction every time he gets to the, to the side. Excuse me, got hiccups. All right, so um, that should fix that.